everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of the John and Wendy Show. It's been a couple of weeks, and we are back. I'm one half of that equation, the outlaw John Roca, joined as always by Wendy Lee. How are you, Wendy? Hey, I'm doing good. You know, it feels like, and I know today's Friday, and that's what's kind of great about our show. It's very casual and fun, but it's felt like a weekend to me for some reason. Oh, already? I don't know. Yeah, but not in the way, not in the relaxing way you think. It's just... Right. Just counting down the. I just got my days mixed up. I get. I guess I don't know because I just wrapped a job for fandom, Congratulations. and then we hit. Thank you, and then we hit the Fourth of July. Yeah. So I don't know. I guess that felt in a way. Yeah, the whole week has been weird. It's been all off. Um, yeah. And it's been busy, but it hasn't felt as overwhelming as other weeks in the past. And so I feel like things are just kind of slowly taking a little bit of a break here through July, and then once Comic Con hits, we're going to start ramping up again with the fall stuff. And, you know, Ms. Marvel is out there. The boys just wrapped up. Stranger Things just wrapped up. So there's not much coming other than Thor Love and Thunder into this July area of time. And mm-hmm. then boom, Andor, boom, uh, the ILM uh, Light Magic documentary. And um, She-Hulk. And She-Hulk, all of that is going to start happening. And, uh, you know, we were doing the Geek Buddies earlier today. And I just said, you know, there's going to be smoke coming off the Geek Buddies logo by the time <laughs> it's over. There's going to be so much we're going to be doing because we'll be at Comic-Con as well. Uh, so one more run here, the four of us with Kalinowski hanging out in the hotel room. So it's just going to be a blast. So, yeah, it, there's a lot happening. In Where a few are you guys weeks. staying? The can Bay you say what Hilton. you – okay, I was like, what can you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucky yeah. sons of <laughs> – Where are you at? Are you at somewhere? Well, I missed the hotel, hotel apocalypse. I had oh, no idea that right. it happened. I was oh, waiting yeah. for the email, and it never, like, it hit my inbox. And then I saw my friend's, you know – Instagram story. She's like, "Oh, I did it, Bay friend again." I'm like, <laughs> "No, I missed it." So uh, missed then I scrambled it. and I scrambled and I was like, "Man, I don't even know how many days I'm going to be down there. I don't want to be right. paying, you know, six hundred dollars a room. Like, I can't do that. A spot yeah. it's just for me and Dustin." So I found a little place. Oh, a, in a little. No. No, no, I don't okay. want to have to search for cameras. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, I don't trust their babies anymore. Yeah, these are getting uh, bad reputations. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. N- no thanks. Like yeah. I, I'm just f- sleep like fully closed. And yeah, I was reading or, total neck. that there were two girls like ran away because they thought it was a sex trafficking Airbnb, and I'm like, what is happening in the world? This is you know, crazy. people are sick, man. <sighs> yeah, if I it's had meant su- to be like temporarily lodging, and then you're turning into something gross. Yeah, yeah. I think if I had superpowers, if people were like, oh, well, what superpower would you want? And I'd say, I'd want to f- be able to f- find every ki- criminal in the world. If I could have that superpower yes. and then, you know, take them out. Yes. Or put them in jail, rather, is what I mean. Take them out of circulation, is what I mean. Yes. That's yeah. what, that would Keep be my. Behind yeah. bars. Exactly. Whoops. Yeah. Right to bars. Yeah, exactly. But we're, we're going to be in a little Italy, which I'm kind oh, of excited okay. for because right. the food is bomb down there yeah and i won't have to pay skyrocket price for limited menu we go down there to eat uh every few weeks with her sister and her sister's boyfriend uh the lady atlaw and i so it is close it's not too far away that where it feels like oh my god it's a hell of a walk it's yeah. close enough and plus you're right you're around some really great eateries that make it feel like you're not fully in comic-con so you're both in san diego and comic-con so you can take a break from the yeah. madness so it might work out really well for you for sure i think so there there were some people that i was talking to coming off this production job that i did they're like people mm-hmm. were like oh i love staying in little italy because it does get you away yeah from you know that super crowded weird mentality that we all kind of get ourselves into in comic-con yeah. plus there's like a it's like a train or a metro or something yes. like that right there. um it comes every 15 minutes yep and it cost me two dollars and fifty cents away see it's nothing. Like, and, see you later, Uber. Exactly. And I bet you're not going to be standing in 500 deep lines to get your Starbucks in the morning. Like it's not, it's going to be much more relaxed in the yeah. little Italy than it is closer to the, uh, the event. So yeah, smart moves, smart moves for sure. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we're going to jump into all kinds of things going on here in the world of entertainment. We're going to talk a little uh, Thor, Love and Thunder and early box office returns. We're going to talk about breaking news with a new director for the Captain America 4 we're going to get into some Blackpink stuff, some uh, news about what characters are returning from the Marvel series that were on Netflix into the Echo series here. Um, and we're going to jump into a trailer for Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, kind of a teaser trailer that dropped this afternoon 
as well. So we got a lot of this stuff going on. Please remember the Streamlabs are available. You see the address there on the screen. Send in your support. It's been a couple of weeks. So send in some support and also your bits and cheers. Send them in as we go along. All right, Wendy. Where is she? Oh, and subscribe oh. to the channel yes. if you haven't already. Be- Not to YouTube. Well, I mean, yes to YouTube, but on Twitch because you get really cool emotes of our faces. Yes, you do. Exactly. <laughs> That's like a fun thing you can play around with. Lisa. Yeah, you Come can on. unlock those. Be part of the fun, for God's sakes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Wendy, where shall we start? Well, let's go ahead and kick off some uh, box office numbers for Thor Love and Thunder. This is the fourth film in the Thor film franchise uh obviously the fourth time well more than the fourth time that we've seen chris hensworth as thor yeah but it has opened to 29 million dollars just on the thursday night previews (sighs) along in the domestic box office so this marks the fifth highest opening for an mcu film and the 13th highest ever and that's tied with Rogue One. And according to this article by uh, Variety and the second biggest Thursday launch of 2022, right behind Doctor Strange, which yeah. had thirty six million dollars, mm-hmm. which is huge. Yeah. Like people, I think, uh, you know, I don't n- I haven't watched your review yet. So I don't know your okay. thoughts. And I get maybe we hold that for the end of the show. Sure. Sure. Because we have that slated for the end of the show. But we have seen it. Both of us do yeah. have our non-spoiler reactions or should i say reviews yeah. uh up on our respective channel so make sure you guys check that out uh but this is uh, i like it, when it's a character like thor you know with a director such as taika waititi mm. and if people loved those who loved thor ragnarok coming back fully knowing what to expect i think like that those tickets were pre-purchased and they yeah. are ready to just rock out to a good time yeah yeah, I like these numbers. I mean, these are great, you know, especially because mm. some of the reviews have been mixed on certain mm. areas. And so the fact that it's already opening at 29 million on a Thursday night bodes well. I've seen some prognostications go as high as 170 million. And if it does that, it'll come close to Dr. Strange's Multiverse of Madness, which I think leads the uh, year at 185 million uh, for the weekend for the debut there. But uh, right behind it was Jurassic World Dominion, 145, the Batman with 134. So clearly the franchise tentpole pictures are massive here. Top Gun Maverick isn't a way a franchise picture, so it kind of connects up, but they didn't do that boffo box office on opening weekend. They did well, they just didn't do 185 million dollars. So anything is possible here. You know, I like the movie, so I anticipate, and we're gonna talk about reviews later, but I anticipate that there will be more people who enjoy the film than not. And uh, the crowd, I saw it in at my second screening because I went again a second time to a full crowded theater to see it. Uh, They were loving it. A lot of laughs, a lot of uh, uh, tears. So to me, that lets me know that, you know, outside of the critics, there might be a lot of people who are going to come and see this film multiple times because, as you said, it's, I don't know, the 10th, 12th time that uh, uh, Chris Hemsworth has played Thor yeah, maybe more. And he's really settled into the role. And I think they love just spending time with Chris Hemsworth and his unique brand of comedy with Taika Waititi. Um, and so we shall see how it turns out. But this bodes really, really well. And it's right now it's what it's projected to. Oh, it's earned forty eight point six million internationally Ooh. as well, uh, where it's playing in, in only forty two markets. Uh, it's projected to hit one forty to one fifty overseas as well uh, on opening weekend. It's not playing in China, Russia or France yet. So. They could all they could be approaching 400 million by the time Monday or Tuesday rolls around, Wendy, which is pretty good for Marvel. And then if there's yeah. word of mouth, enough people want to go back and see this thing. Don't be surprised if this thing crosses a billion dollars and shocks some people as well. Because I mean, Doctor Strange, for all the negative reviews, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. made its money. So uh, we could see the same thing happen here with uh, Love and Thunder. Yeah, and it's a good time. It's a good yeah. time in the theaters, and I understand we're still, you know, it doesn't feel like it anymore here in the states, but uh, we are still in a pandemic, and I get people have apprehensive or are, are apprehensive about going to the theaters, and yeah. so, you know, I think that that still I feel like does have an effect on on numbers uh, yeah. in general. Like I'm still kind of choosy as to what things I'm going to theaters for, but yeah. like these look like good numbers to me. I'm pretty yeah. sure Marvel is, uh, you know, happy with the way it's looking so far. And again, it's only Friday. Literally yeah. the film is out now. So, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll wait to see on Monday how, uh, how it's going to 
how it's going to do, but I imagine it's going to skyrocket. And I'm just looking at Rotten Tomatoes right now, too. Yeah. The critic score, tomato meter, is at 68%. Audience score is at 83%. Yeah, see, that's that's a big deal. That's a it's big deal. a fun movie. Yes. It's a very fun movie. I feel like if you like Ragnarok, if you kind of can get behind, you know, Taika's humor yeah. and his, the way he scripts and directs things, yeah, I think you're going to have a good time with this one. Yeah. I, yeah. I laughed a lot. Yeah. Me too. And we'll talk yeah. about it a little bit more as the show goes along. For, For sure. sure. All right, Wendy, where shall we uh, jump off to next? And we have some breaking news here. Yeah, let's do some breaking news. And you texted me this uh, right before we started. And since we're in the MCU, let's just continue on with the MCU. Yeah. Because Captain America 4 with Anthony Mackie has landed its new director in Julius Ona. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, yeah. Was that a name that you had on like a list at all? Well, kind of like in the back of my mind, but nowhere near something uh, at a Marvel movie because I remember Loose being a big deal. You know, we're yes. both members of the Hollywood Critics Association. And I remember Loose and Waves being a massive deal with Kelvin Harrison Jr. Did you do Waves as well? Right, yeah, people people were really wow. excited about Kevin uh, about him. So Luce yeah. was directed uh, by Ona. So to me, in my mind, I was like, okay, this is a director to keep an eye on. Mm. But I had no idea that they were going to hand him uh, Captain America four. But now this makes a lot of sense, especially when you consider the fact that you know this is a black Captain America. You've got a black director. You've got Malcolm Spellman, a uh, uh, executive producer, who's going to take care and look at this. Uh, um, story and maybe hearing some of the criticisms coming out of Falcon and Winter Soldier come with a little bit more of a streamlined story to tell and they mm -hmm. found essentially another young independent filmmaker like Ryan Coogler was at the time after Fruitvale Station and Creed and handing him you know, the possibilities to create a real um, good Marvel film here that speaks to the black experience in our country and in our world so I'm excited about all of that uh, for sure. And it's a nice combo that makes me wonder uh, what kind of film we're going to get. And if they're, they're really focusing on uh, establishing the emotional stakes before uh, people put on a costume and fly around and do all that stuff. It's more about establishing the emotional story. So that lets me know that we're in good hands here with a director like this for sure. Yeah, I feel like this is going to a lot of the emotional notes that you were just talking about mm. that we got to see in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Hopefully with this director who knows how to really touch on the emotions. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I think that's the whole point because there's it's going to be more than just Sam, you know, with his fancy new suit being having the new title of Captain America yeah. flying around and being a superhero. It's going to be so much more than that. I imagine maybe hopefully, you know, we'll get to see some of other characters uh return mm -hmm. and i don't mean just like sebastian stan and and you know um emily van camp right i mean some of the other characters that we that we didn't have too much time with uh yeah. that, like do i it, is it is it not spoiler anymore if i talk about that show or i think it's it... fine yeah i mean at this point, okay if you haven't yeah. watched uh falcon and winter soldier at this point i hate to break it to you there's no spoiler, <laughs> there's no spoiler <laughs> anymore. Yeah. can you imagine people who are like wait don't tell me I still have a seat. <laughs> it's like I'm sorry. That was that was last year, 2021. Yeah. yeah, it's been a bit. Um, yeah. So I mean, obviously, I'm curious about curious about the Bradleys. You know, we got to yeah. meet Eli Bradley for just a right. second. Are we going to get to see a little bit more of Isaiah? Because that's where a lot of the emotional stuff hit with me. Yeah. With that series, so I'm hoping with this director that they'll get to dive a little bit more into that. I have a feeling. We all have a theory that, you know, by them introducing Eli Bradley, mm -hmm. there's a certain route they're going to go. So, yeah, maybe they will put him in, you know, just a little bit of the film to kind of yeah. move that forward. So when we're meeting him in New Avengers, people aren't like, who's that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's that's what you that's what you and that's a great point you bring up here, because, of course, um, he becomes Patriot. Patriot uh, is part of the Young Avengers. So is it the Young Avengers that's coming? Um, what's Isaiah Brad and a lot of people felt that Isaiah Bradley wasn't given enough time in that series. So will he have more time here as part of the story uh, for Captain America? I'm very curious uh, about that. Um, yeah. But then, you, you know, a lot of people asking, is U.S. agent going to be in this? Possibly. Are, Possibly. This is gonna, yeah, this is happening after um, Secret Invasion. So where how is that going to um, shake the MCU out? 
uh, to uh, to deal to connect to the story they're trying to tell here in, yeah. in Captain America Four. So there's a lot that and and will Zemo come back? Will we get Bucky back? Uh, you know, there's all kinds of questions about who's going to be involved and in this here. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah uh, and and you talk about uh, uh, Sharon Carter. Absolutely. Is she actually the Sharon Carter, or is she the the uh, the Cree Sharon Carter? We shall <laughs> find out with. Secret right. invasion because a lot of people yeah. were kind of thrown off by her uh, heel turn, so to speak. So mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see, we'll see for yeah. sure. But it's a good director. I like it. Yeah, yeah, I like I like it too. And I think uh, you know we'll see where it goes as long as they they you know let the director tell the story. That, yes. like, like they're hiring these people because they're good at something specifically. Right. Right. Um, so I'm hoping that they just like let them do their thing. Yep. So we can have the movie that they envision. Yeah, and I'm sure that Julius uh, Ona will be reaching out to um, uh, Ryan Coogler to talk about his experience. Oh, for sure. Right? And the Russo yeah. brothers and um, uh, Destin Daniel Cretton for how directing Shang-Chi. I'm sure there will be yeah. conversations going on about uh, you know, how it is to work in the Marvel system as a director of color. Am I going to be able to tell the story fully? Mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, we shall see for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, all right. And we've got a cheer that came through here. I want to give some love to Travis Earl. Hey, 85. Travis. Thank you, Travis. Very kind Thank of you to send you. a cheer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, send in your cheers, send in your bits, send in your stream labs, ladies and gentlemen. We got, we're ready to answer any questions you got. We're ready to believe you, as they say in the Ghostbusters. So, <laughs> <No>. um, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Wendy, where shall we head to next? Let's talk about the new trailer for Lord of the Rings, Oof. The Rings of Power. Yeah. Uh, so I've watched it a couple of times. Okay. It's just a, it's like a nice little, you know, stinger, right? It, it's yeah. Not too, Teaser. It, it gives yeah. you enough, but not too much. Leaves you curious right. for more. I think um, cinematically it looks really, really great. Yeah. It definitely leads me back into like, ooh, Lord of the Rings again. <laughs> I don't know, though. For me, yeah. I just, uh, I didn't feel too much. Okay. Other than that, it's I think it's gorgeous. Yeah. And I'm definitely going to give it a go because I, I am a fan of, you know, the whole token world. But right. I don't know. I, I, I don't know why my like appetite for this has kind of waned a little bit. Well, we had 18 hours of Lord of the Rings, right? I mean, if you do if you do <laughs> the extended editions, they're essentially almost three hours each. Which I month. have duplicate well, copies of because we both bought them and then we got married and neither one of us wanted to throw our copies so we still have <laughs> that's multiple great. ones <laughs> nine hours on hobbit nine hours of lord of the rings 18 hours in middle earth um so the idea of going back to this and i think people are a little worried because the hobbit films don't have necessarily the best mm -hmm. reputation amongst the lord of the rings fans unfortunately i like those hobbit films but a lot of people don't um and then you go okay well do we really need another Lord of the Rings? Oh, it's going to be an Amazon Prime. Oh, Peter Jackson doesn't have anything to do with it. So there's a lot of trepidation. I think a lot of cautionary optimism. And so they're presenting it, plus all the backlash for having a multicultural or multi-ethnic cast. I think we're seeing that as well. So there's a lot working against this um, series. And if it's not good, and certainly some people liked and then some people didn't like Wheel of Time, and that's mm -hmm. the most recent series that and you know it you movie. you said that and they had they i don't remember which part of the trailer i saw yeah and i kind of went oh wheel of time oh and yeah, i know exactly. they're and i know they're not related i know they're right. not related i know and this is set thousands of years even before some of the token you know stuff right supposedly but like i don't know i i did like the wheel of time i didn't finish okay. it because they they didn't one time was like a whole issue where I was like, I don't have time for this because we, we shot reactions and I was just like, I don't have time to edit. I don't have time right. to film it. There's just too much stuff, too much stuff going on, but they also didn't follow the book a hundred percent. Yeah. 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 And I think what affected it was like, and I hadn't read the books and I, I didn't even finish the series wow. for a long time, but Dustin certainly is like a hardcore fan of the right. books right. Uh, and he like reread it too i think before we watched it okay. uh and i so i think he he criticized it a little bit harder than i did okay so i think <laughs> with that it kind of waned my own interest a little bit and am i gonna go back and finish it yes but like cinematically i was like oh it's giving a little like you know wheel of time right so yeah 
Well, it's and it's going uh, across a number of um, how can I say this across a number of storylines, right? So there's going to be yeah. a lot of different characters because the cast is massive. It's a huge cast, so mm -hmm. clearly they've got a lot of story to tell. And I think that's what the whole point of the teaser trailer was was to show you all the different kingdoms mm. that this show is going to be on. You know, ironically, I got a Game of Thrones vibe from this trailer when I was watching it. Ah. Kind of like you know, the light that's going across, almost like a meteor that's going across the whole trailer. That's essentially mm -hmm. the opening of Game of Thrones showing you each kingdom we're going to be going in for that episode. Mm -hmm. And it feels like that light is essentially that showing you each kingdom we're going to be seeing in the series uh, and all the different characters, you know. But I liked some of the visuals. Um, and I hear what you're saying, though. There was no real emotional connection because we didn't sense yeah. who the people are that we're supposed to be following, whose stories are we supposed to be following. So hopefully when they drop a full trailer, um, and I don't know, because there was a, a leak of a trailer yesterday that had Brazilian subtitles, then they dropped the first teaser to kind of tease Comic-Con. Oh, uh, and then, and they've said there's going to be a trailer next week. So I don't know if this was the trailer that they were going to drop next week and they just dropped it early because of the leak mm. or whatever. Mm. So we shall see. But a, hopefully a fuller trailer mm -hmm. will give us who the characters are that we're supposed to be connecting with and following through the story. Because that, that's what I want to see. Because the visuals, yeah. I think they've got the visuals. The visuals are great. Yes. They nailed it. Exactly. So let me, who am I connecting to? That's going to help um, uh, get me to connect to the visuals as well as I watch this series. So hopefully. That's and I think, I think you hit the nail on the head there mm. about the connection to these mm. characters. It's like, they're all brand new characters as far as we know. Yeah. Like, you know, um, and for a lot of us before seeing Lord of the Rings, we had already read at least at the very least you read the Hobbit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, at the yeah. very least in school, you read The Hobbit or you saw the cartoon. Right. So we have already some sort of like familiar, familiar territory yeah. before going in. You have connections with it. Or if you read Lord of the Rings, then you already know these characters, yeah. you know, the, the Fellowship of the Ring. Um, and with this, I'm just kind of like, I don't I don't know that I'm, I want to learn about them and I hope it's good. Yeah. But I just kind of felt, you know, like, oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> I'm definitely going to check it out. And it just like I wasn't invested emotionally. Yeah. yeah. No, I hear you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, all right. So we'll see what happens. And that's, uh, they're going to be at Comic-Con uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, on I think Thursday or Friday is their panel. So I will try yeah. to find a way to get there if I don't have anything mm -hmm. else going on and watch it and see what we're getting. Yeah. Um, Ambling Soul donated here a, a, a stream lab. Thank you, Ambling. Thank says, you. I want to issue a challenge. Can we get Nick's next week's show to be more chaotic where you have to follow your run sheet and talking points while playing fall guys. Oh my God. <laughs> Is it on the switch yet? Uh, oh, I don't know. I know it's on, let me, let me check Twitch. I know that, but I don't I know. Can, you can I can try to download it off steam. I guess I have it on my PS five. Of course you do. <laughs> I'm still salty. <laughs> she I can't believe it it's, is. it is on switch. So. Oh, well, <laughs> I mean, challenge, it's challenge could, yeah, maybe. Okay, all right. Maybe I can we download could try it. that. Maybe I can, uh, I can download it. You know, I was gonna stream today too, so maybe oh. I, I give that a try. I'm very bad at anything with, like, Fall Guy is the is it should not be one of the games that I play. Oh, okay. That is that is a game that I would throw my controller across the room and rage quit, for sure. <laughs> I'm oh. not good at games like this. Yeah, Have fun me... games, no good. Let me tell you this. I, my patrons got me to play it the other night, Cheryl being one of my patrons, for about 20 minutes. Uh, and there was a string of epithets as I was playing three or four games because I'm like, why is everyone faster than I am? Why am I running around with my arms up all the time, for God's sakes? And they're all in my way when I'm trying to jump into things. You can push them, can't you? I don't know if I can. I'm still learning how to play the game. It's my first time. But I, yeah, I, there was a lot of cuss words coming out. Of <laughs> I don't know if I should be doing this on Twitch. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's madness. Oh, man. Yeah, we shall see. We shall see. Amblin Soul says, nobody's good at fall, guys. That's why you fall everywhere. Yeah, I guess so. It's oh a good my point. Gosh. It's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jay Mister, we already broke that news about 10, 15 minutes ago, brother. But uh, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can watch back. it on the VOD. Yeah. yeah. Scroll back. All right, let's keep going. Uh, what do we got next here? We're going to go back to our regular lineup uh, oh, and yeah. uh, fall back towards the MCU to talk about the next Disney Plus Marvel series, which is Echo. And we kind of already 
knew this. This isn't really like new news, but it's exciting news. Yeah. That uh, Vincent D'Onofrio and Charlie Cox are returning to reprise their roles as uh, Kingpin. Mm -hmm. What is happening? Why am I here? Matt Murdock? Yeah, and Matt Murdock. Sorry, I'm like hearing weird things. I think it's my neighbors. Oh, okay. Maybe they're playing Fall Guys. Oh, are they fighting? Somebody's. Hold on a second. Oh my God, please. Put the microphone. Uh, Can you guys hear that? (laughs) No, I I can't hear. What's going on? Turn on. Why is there rock music playing? Oh my God. Is that Eddie? I don't. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Okay. Because I don't even have my phone in here. I'm so sorry. Go I'll check. be right back. I'll, I'll keep you guys updated. You can, I'll leave my mic on so you can hear. Okay. <laughs> All right. There goes Wendy. Uh, but let's keep it going here. Yeah. Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio are coming back. Uh, I, I don't know if he's coming back as just Matt Murdock or if he's coming back as Daredevil. I don't know if they're going to launch Daredevil using the Echo series to launch Daredevil. I'd be surprised by that. I think they want to give a bigger launch to Daredevil, but maybe he'll come, but he'll come back as Matt Murdock. And Kingpin, will this be a Kingpin who was shot by Echo at the end of Hawkeye or a Kingpin before? This is going to be prequel Kingpin, like we saw <coughs> with some of those flashback scenes in Hawkeye with uh, Vera Farmiga with uh, her situation there. I don't know. So this is going to be very interesting. And so it says, Echo will include a plot, li- plot line in which Daredevil, whose alter ego's blind attorney Matt Murdock, is searching out a former ally. So it looks like maybe there will be that. And that ally is Jessica Jones. So will we see now uh, Kristen Ritter popping into Echo? So is Echo going to essentially launch all these Marvel Netflix uh, characters back into the canon, back into the MCU canon, rather? And I, I, I would be surprised. For that, I don't think Iron Fist, uh, I think the actor who played Iron Fist said he's not coming back to play him, and I don't think anybody has had an issue with that. Uh, So will they recast that? And also Luke Cage is another possibility here as well. Um, So uh, the way they've uh, described this series is Echo follows Maya Lopez as her life in New York as a gang leader catches up with her and she returns to her hometown to reconnect with her Native American roots. Uh, So what does that mean? Is the scenes going to happen at the beginning of the show and then she heads back to her hometown and uh, kind of, you know, goes on this journey of reconnect and then comes back to have a one final battle in New York city. I don't know. It's an interesting question, but I like that Marvel is ignoring this idea of go woke and go broke because they're dialing into these cultures, dialing into people of color and their um, connections with their community. We're seeing it now currently with Ms. Marvel. We had it in Captain America, winter soldier. We had it in black Panther, uh, we haven't had Latino wise yet, but hopefully that's coming. And now we're getting it here in a Native American approach with Echo. So, very curious. So, what do you think, Wendy? Do you think this is the right move? Charlie Cox, D'Onofrio, possibly Jessica Jones, or possibly Daredevil, and launching them through Echo? Do you think that's a big enough name and title? Or do you think they're doing this because Echo is not necessarily a big enough name and title yet, even though she was good in Falcon and Winter Soldier? I'm oh, sorry, in uh, Hawkeye, do you think they're using this kind of star power? to get eyes on the Echo series. I think it's a little bit of both. And I think because the the comic does tie all of them together. So it makes sense. Uh, She's already met, you know, Kingpin. Yes. So it 100% makes sense for him to return. Um, Most people are saying like he's not dead. I would imagine he's not dead. I, I don't feel like like you invite Vincent D'Onofrio back to replace a very iconic role just to like kill, kill him, him off yeah yeah so sorry for spoilers um so i think i mean obviously yeah they are using this as a jumping point because yeah. there's a lot of like i think things that were in motion where you know the shows on netflix were canceled and then we didn't hear anything about them and then all of a sudden now because yeah. they're technically marvel properties they put them on disney plus and a lot of people wanted to know like hey what about daredevil like the, the right. people you cast are perfect Let's keep them. Yeah. Uh, and what better way to to do it this way before you insert them back into, you know, the movies. Yep. And technically, and I'm not even going to count Spider-Man because that's technically Sony, even right. though it is Marvel. Yep. But like MCU proper under the Disney banner, we haven't seen any of these characters on the big screen yet. Right. You're right. So, well, I mean, we saw Matt Murdock in Spider-Man, but you're right. It doesn't fully, it's not fully... 
Like it is, but it isn't. MCU film, right? Exactly. Yeah. Sony shares half of it. That's a good mm-hmm. point. So yeah, what so, what is their way of getting around that? Yeah. But yeah, uh, this could be a jumping off point. I think what's important is they have Daredevil and Kingpin mm-hmm. in this, and then from there, depending on where the show goes or where these characters go, like their next move, which I would imagine their own movie or their yeah. own series, that's when we'll start seeing the appearance, hopefully, of Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. Yeah. And yeah. uh, and Punisher, I really want John yeah. Bernthal to come Ooh, back. Oh yes, so he's perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's and, so um, good. Who was it who plays Jigsaw? I forget his name. That guy in the first season of Punisher. Oh, yeah. Ben Ben, mm, mm. the dark one. Ben Barnes. Oh, no. ben Barnes. Yes, I was like, oh no, the dark one. Yeah, <laughs> Shadow yeah. and Bone. How can I forget? <laughs> That's right. So yeah, it could be fascinating to see how that if Echo. I'd be surprised, but I mean. It does kind of make sense. It's how you build up buzz for a show that maybe wouldn't get that much buzz. You're going to bring back all the MC, uh, the uh, Marvel characters from Netflix, mm-hmm. then that's going to get more eyes on it to see what's happening. So it's a good it's a good way to go about it, I think for sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right. Let's see what do we got here. Uh, Doug Developer sent in the Streamlab. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. He said I've been over, I've been underwhelmed with Phase Four so far. I feel as though the MCU has been this amazing video game in which beating Thanos was like finishing the main campaign, and now we are left with side missions that don't quite amount to anything. Um, Say that again. It, okay, I'll read it again. It says um, I've been underwhelmed with Phase Four so far. I feel as though the MCU has been this amazing video game in which beating Thanos was like finishing the main campaign. Mm-hmm. And now we are left with side missions that don't quite amount to anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the both of us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hear that. Uh, certainly there have been complaints about every Disney plus show complaints about every film in the phase four situation and we are kind of slowly laying a little bit of ground or the oh, sorry marvel is i'm not marvel is laying a little bit of groundwork step by step to lead us to secret invasion by introducing these characters right you've got ms marvel you've got now falcon as captain america you've got um uh, uh winter soldier now back fully uh doing his thing you've got u.s agent you've got yelena belova so in essence, what it's amounting to is the launching of Young Avengers and the launching of all these new characters that are going to replace all the old characters that we knew from the first three phases, pretty much. I mean, the only who, who are the people left? Thor is left and the Hulk is left. But even the Hulk may be She-Hulk right. taking over the mantle from Hulk to be the mm-hmm. Hulk in this new a phase of the MCU, you know, Thor is the last one holding on. And I don't know how much longer. Yeah. Cause I don't Thor know if Hawkeye is going to do it right. all again. Like right, he right. was pretty established that he's like hanging up the bow and arrow. Yeah. I think they're setting up teams, right? You've yeah. got the U S agent team with Yelena Belova and Valentina and whoever else is going to be a part of that. Mm-hmm. You've got possibly the West coast Avengers with Hawkeye, with wonder man coming with white vision uh, there's possibilities there. You've got the Young Avengers, as we mentioned here, and so, and then eventually X Men, eventually Fantastic Four. So, don't forget about the two. Celestials and the Eternals, too. right? Exactly, you're right. Yeah. The Eternals as well. Yes, all of that being set up. So, there are certain things being set up. So, it may not lead to the Infinity Gauntlet, but mm-hmm. I think what they're doing is laying the groundwork for all these teams to be set up. Then Secret Invasion is going to happen. And we're going to shake this whole thing all up and then see where it lands. And then we'll find out who our main villain is. Because we've introduced Kang. Is Kang going to be our main villain going into right. this phase four? So they've introduced a bunch of stuff. And that has amounted to much more than nothing. It's just there hasn't been a through line that we've yeah. been sensing here at this point. Yeah. And I will say, I feel like the pandemic threw a huge ranch yeah. into their plan. They had to rearrange some things yeah, certain yeah, yeah. shows were supposed to air before this one and they had to reverse yes. the order and that's like a huge giant shift that yeah. i'm sure nobody was anticipating this like crazy pandemic that's gonna like stop the world yeah you know for yeah. li- literally a year stop production and stuff like that and i think as fans we're so lucky to have been really spoiled by what we got in the previous phase you yeah. know ending with Endgame and infinity war but remember what it took to get there yeah not all the movies were hits 
Yep. And sometimes you watch a movie and you're just like, what? Yeah. Yeah. You know, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, right. Especially phase yeah. one. You were like, what? Yeah. What you're like, what? nobody, if you, if you watch one of those movies, did you, did you sit in theater and go, yeah, this is going to lead to that? No. No. No, you got to, you know, you can't have the payoff that was Infinity War without building these characters and having mm -hmm. the audience becoming fans and feel emotionally connected to these, to these characters. When you have instances where you lose characters like Black Widow, like Vision, and you, you know, watch other characters be affected by that, there has to be a reason for us to care so that yeah. I feel like that's what Disney and Marvel is doing right now. So it may feel directionless, but uh, as a fan of <laughs> longtime fan of Disney, uh, mm -hmm. they know what they're doing. We just have to, you know, wait for it. And yeah. plus like, if you want to get like the next big thing, like then it, and, and it doesn't feel, how do I want to say it? You get it, and it's it's this big thing, right? But if you're not con connected to any of these characters, yeah, right. Then is it going to be big, anyways? Yeah, if you introduce the big baddie before you introduce the all the characters that are going to fight the big baddie, then you're yeah. kind of doing it in reverse, and it might not necessarily work. So, mm -hmm. yeah, what they seen. It, plus, I mean, you look at Doctor Strange: Multiverse Man. Look, I'm not the biggest fan of the movie, obviously, but it introduced the multiverse and all these different universes. Strange falling through all these different universes. We saw Clea at the end of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse yes. of Madness in the, in the uh, uh, post credit scene. So, what's her role going to be play going to be to play in all of this? And so, we've introduced the idea of jumping universes. And if you've watched the most recent episode of Ms. Marvel, we've been messing around with time travel as well. So, there's a lot happening here in Phase Four. And there's Even the though, dimensions that are yeah. parallel, so it's like slightly different than a, it's points. it's a whole thing. Yeah. So not just universes, parallel dimensions. So it is a lot. Uh, that we've been introduced, but maybe it just feels like so much that it doesn't feel like a, a cohesive thing just yet, but they're mm -hmm. just laying all the groundwork. And then eventually when that garden blooms, you're going to be blown away at what you just saw was a bunch of seeds on the ground in dirt. Yeah. So now we'll see what happens by the end of this phase going into phase five for sure. We shall see. Yeah. Um, and uh, thank you, Doug. Appreciate the question. And thank you to Jay, Mr. 22, who has subscribed. Uh, <gasps> thank you. Thank you, Jay. Um, so yeah subscribe if you can um all right let's move on wendy where shall we jump to next let's take a look at uh this next piece of news which i'm pretty excited for steven yuan is re reuniting with bon jung ho for his next movie alongside robert pattinson naomi aki mark ruffalo and tony collette wow. so uh those two have collaborated obviously on netflix's okja yeah. uh which did you get to see that when yes, it was I saw okja <laughs> okja <laughs> okja okja i've never wanted wanted a pet okja more than when i watched this movie i would have no place to put it but fair enough fair enough. i really i was like what is this i want it so uh this yeah. next film we don't have a title yet it doesn't oh. seem like it uh, no, no, right? right next it's based on the film. novel but we don't have a title yeah yeah i mean it, i feel like it it most likely will be named the same name mickey seven yeah uh, by Edward Ashton, uh, but this is going to be for WB, so it's not going straight to Netflix or anything like that. And Bong Joon Ho will uh, direct, he will write, and he will produce for his production company off screen. Mm -hmm. This is exciting. I feel like uh, they had a good time working together on Okja. Yeah. So they obviously want to come back together uh, and do this. And it also retains. Uh, them with Brad Pitt's Plan B production mm -hmm. company who worked with Steven Yeun on Minari. Yeah, yeah. So I'm very excited about all the team up there is uh, and the, the addition of the rest of the cast makes me very excited. I was like, I enjoyed Okja. I didn't 100% love it, but yeah, yeah, I loved yeah. a lot of the other, um, you know, Director Bones other films. Yeah. So I am looking forward to this one. I don't know what kind of story. I don't even know the story yet, but it does say here that it follows Mickey Seven, who is an expandable, a disposable employee on human expedition sent to colonize the ice world. Okay. Is it giving like Snowpiercer? I don't think so. Cause it says whenever, okay. there's a, whenever there's a mission that's too dangerous, the crew turns to Mickey after uh -huh. one iteration dies, a new body is regenerated with most of his memories intact. Oh, that's not Snowpiercer at all. No. After six deaths, Mickey Seven understands the terms of his deal and why it was the only colonial position unfilled when he took it. So 
An interesting story. Look, Bong Joon Ho, this this huh. novel only came out in February. This hasn't been around for a long time, so it's really interesting. He hasn't done his movie since Parasite 2019. He hasn't done anything, yeah, movie wise since then. So clearly, he was waiting on this. Yeah, he was waiting to be inspired, yeah. and I think maybe this has been clearly this seems to be an inspiration for him to do this. Uh, so this idea of okay, well, what is the role? he is playing why is it me? so once again it's a film here that we've seen recently a lot of these films love death and robots a series these films that are ta- was them with colin farrell i forget where they have an android that they have connections to and are they getting so this mm-hmm. idea of exploring technology as it mixes with humanity um like swan song which was really awesome on apple tv that movie with um Maharshala Ali, if you guys haven't seen that, I highly recommend that one. That also explored futuristic idea of replacing yourself with an Android. What is that like? So Mm -hmm. there's a lot of these questions. So this is something that I we haven't seen from Bong Joon Ho ever. Uh, Something where it's way out there in the future in terms of their approach. Uh, and um, you've got androids and stuff being mixed in. We didn't see that in in uh, Snowpiercer. That Mm -hmm. was more all human beings on a train in a, in a post-apocalyptic world, this is something completely different. So I am very curious of the challenge and you know, he's going to change the source material to fit what he wants, the story he wants to tell. So very, very curious to see how this plays out with him at the helm. Yeah. I I'm, I'm excited. Anytime Bong Joon-ho makes a movie, I'm like, Ooh, what's this one going to be about? Like I, I, I still remember sitting in the theater at TIFF and watching Parasite. Oh yeah. And full on had a notebook. You know, when you go to a, a film festival, you're like, all right, I'm just going to like bullet point some stuff. And it's I wrote yeah. the title and the director, which I don't even know why I did, because I already knew which movie I was watching. Yeah. But I was just, yeah, I guess later when I refer back and I wrote nothing. There were ink lots <laughs> because I was just like <laughs> the yeah. whole time. Yeah. yeah. So I'm excited. I'm excited for yeah. them to reteam. Uh, I really love Steven Yen and Minari. Yes. Among his other projects. But uh, I really liked him in that role. So good luck to you, Glenn. It's great to see you blo- blossoming the way you're blossoming. Yes, so, I yeah. know. Look at nope. him now. No, nope's around the corner. Nope is two or three weeks away. I don't know yeah. if you remember that, uh, Wendy. Yeah, that's coming yeah. too. So. Have you seen it yet? I haven't seen no, it no. yet. My screening is sometime in the next week or two. I think. I think I have to reach out to Universal. <clears throat> oh, okay. And ask and ask just like a little reminder, like a hi. I would like to see, please. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, we got a, uh, a B Love seventy eight sent us one bit saying seems good. Thank you, B Love. Appreciate all it. All right, thank you. Um, all right, let's move on here, Wendy. We got some uh, GameStop news. What's this all about? Well, this was uh, trending on Twitter yesterday, so I actually mm. like thought about putting it under trending or under opening topics, but I felt like it was kind of important. But uh, okay. GameStop has fired their top uh, executive with a CFO. The they fired their CFO, yeah. yeah. Uh, and they laid off uh, a bunch of staff, including those staff also at Game Informer. And it always breaks my heart a little bit when I hear about layoffs because yeah. it is already very hard working, surviving, all of that stuff. And now, you know, more of this. So I was just uh, honestly surprised because... Yeah. I I really had, and maybe because I'm out out of the loop as far as gaming goes, Mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't hearing any sort of anything about GameStop. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, he was fired without cause. And the company, obviously, legally, I don't think they can share any sort of details yeah about about why like there's a lot of like legality stuff that you i don't think you can but as far as i understand from this article he's not even getting a severance payment Oof. beyond what was in his initial offer letter uh he is entitled to certain pay uh rights and benefits but that but that was not disclosed exactly in the filing so that is crazy yeah uh and on top of that layoffs so what happened because I mean, it's not it's not some little like startup company. This is right. GameStop. Yeah, but I think people are moving towards more than ever digital copies of their stuff. So this idea of having a physical place to go mm. and buy, I mean, even Best Buy is moving away from physical media. You see it now. If you go, they used to have rows and rows of Blu-rays and DVDs separate, like Blu-rays in one section 
DVD is in another section. 4K is in another section. 3D is in another section. Now it's all just mixed in. Like if you like the title, go and find the version you want. That's how it is there. Same thing with their video games. It's not a big selection. It's kind of a smaller selection. People are buying stuff online. So this was coming and they were kind of falling apart last year before that weird stuff happened with the Redditors and Wall Street and people making all this kind of money sh that shot up the price. Oh my gosh. Yes. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. madness. And, and there's a great documentary out about it that really kind of breaks it down and the nuts and bolts and the details of everything that happens. It's really fun to watch. Um, but yeah. And so they hired 600 new people because of this influx of cash and the shooting up of the value of the stock. But now clearly that was just a blip and now they're crashing down and looking at all kinds of other things. So they're laying people off and um, it doesn't sound like it's a small number of people either. So yeah. uh, that's kind of unsettling. But yeah, this is this is the way it's going, you know, that uh, physical media is no longer that exciting, even though recently, I think yesterday, PlayStation or somebody like stopped certain titles from being available digitally to people. Um, and all the physical media people came out and said, see, that's why I have stacks and stacks of shit, you know, because you, they'll take it away from you. So I, under <laughs> I understand that. But by the same token, that's you're just you're fighting a losing battle. The physical media is eventually going to go the way. Of the eventually, dope. it's going to go away, which, yeah. you know, I, I also, you know, because we're born of a certain generation. So yes. we enjoy our our physical copies of things, tangible yes. copies. Uh, and and I, I I understand the shift. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, it does make me feel scared for these like brick and mortar stores. Yeah. You know, like we it's used to. Yeah. yeah, that's that's just a part of it. I mean, how how often now? I think aside from clothing and even then, if I know my sizes from specific companies and I know how things will fit, you right. don't necessarily need to go and try things on in yeah. the store, you know? Yeah. So. There is there is that. So yeah, I'm I'm reading some of the tweets from some of the employees that were unfortunately laid off. This one is coming from John Carson on Twitter, and he said, "I was asked to wait a day to say anything official, so here it is. Unfortunately, I am part I am a part of the GameStop layoffs and am no longer employed at Game Informer as of yesterday. Which cherish my time there and the people I worked with even more. But he also did add that Game Informer is still very much around, but yeah. the crew." is operating with a much obviously smaller staff uh, than it should be. And he asks uh, for the fans to support them and show them love as much as you can. There's a lot of talent in the entire staff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just so, rough. You know, I know. We, you know, you and I have been through it. Uh, layoffs. It's, it's tough. It's, it's always a, a kick in the it's teeth. Scary. It and it's scary. Yeah. It's scary. Cause it's, it's scary. Uh, all of a sudden you're like, I don't know what to do. It's like you, <laughs> it's like you're in the deep end of the pool and all of a sudden you forgot how to swim. Yeah, exactly. And you're just like, oh, no, I don't know. Dog paddle. Yeah, Quick. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, there you go. Uh, that's uh, And uh, Travis Earl just sent us another cheer. Thank you, Travis. Appreciate that. Very kind of you. 100 bits. Uh, thank very you. Kind of you. Thank wow. You, um, thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see, Wendy. Uh, I think we're going to where we need to go, right? I think this is our next section. Uh, it's time for what's trending, uh, Wendy's favorite section of the show. Wendy, what shall we talk about here? On We're what's kicking trending? things off with K-pop Corner, as always, because my alt group they have announced the comeback for this August, and I am talking about Blackpink. Yeah, in your area, the girl group that had literally has not had like activity uh, as a as a group for music based appearances. I think since 2020, I think they had a small comeback, but it was like really, really, yeah. really small. Oh, and, and, you know, they're, they kind of are focusing on their, you know, solo, not careers, but their solo uh, schedules. But mm -hmm. a representative from YG Entertainment has revealed that they are currently in the final stages of recording their new album. They're wow. going to start shoot their uh, music video in July and with new comeback with new music this august and they also tease that with this comeback they're also going to be doing a world tour and it's going to be bigger than ever like the largest scale world tour in k-pop girl group history wow. at the end of the year so uh i'm gonna start eating my ramen noodles now and start saving money so because i am getting i i don't care what price i have to pay i am going to the concert 
<laughs> going to the concert. Fair enough. <laughs> well, I mean, do you think this is the reason? How can I say this? Like, yeah, Blackpink had a little bit like earlier this year, there was like a song or something like that. And there was, there was all this stuff. So now they're releasing a bunch of new music here in July and August. They've got this world tour. And it's just as, um, what is it? BTS is uh-huh. taking a little bit of a step back. So now it seems like there's a little bit of a void here. So ah. Blackpink kind of slides in and takes that void. And now everybody is caught up in the Blackpink fever. So to me, that makes a lot of sense. And I do feel, and Wendy, look, I'm not in any way a professional, knowledgeable person on uh, K-pop stuff, but do you sense that this might be the last hurrah for Blackpink? Like a boom, and then they're going to go off and do solo stuff? What do you, or do you think they're always going to kind of be a group together? Like, because they've been doing solo stuff and uh, going off of their own their own Instagram feeds and stuff. So do you, do you sense this is a final kind of tour, or do you sense this is more just kind of reaffirming their status as one of the best K-pop groups in the world. I do worry about that a little bit because mm-hmm. they have been, uh, I think they debuted in 2016. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they're not like a super old group, but the girls are so successful independently yeah. outside of their music right. that in a way, and not saying the black pink isn't important or isn't a part of their identity because it very right. much is. Cause you, so you're always going to associate with them, you know, with the name black pink, yeah. but at the same time, like here's my problem and it's not on okay. the girls. Okay. It's really on YG is yeah. that you have this super talented, super hot girl group that people are, willing to spend like how people spend bts money right they'll, they'll go above and beyond it to support this group the blinks yeah. out there out there and the company just doesn't give that to them right there's a documentary that's it's not super new but it's called black pink um light up the sky mm-hmm. and producer teddy which is a producer of black label which is like a sister label to yg yeah. says there is so many songs that these girls have recorded over the years that we haven't heard. Mm. The last album they released, they called it the full album. It's called Black Pink the Album. There were eight right. songs on there. To me, that's a mini album. Right. So hopefully if this is let's just say like this is their last hurrah as a group because, you know, I don't know anything about the details of their contract when that is up mm. or if they want to renew or if they want to just dis- I don't I am not sure. Right. right. Um, but let's just say maybe the plan is like they could potentially, you know, take a look at disbanding after this or you know, yeah. pause, go on a very long hiatus, let's just say. Right. Um, then give them the biggest album. I want 16 tracks. I want over 10 tracks. <laughs> give me 16. I need 16 tracks. If they have all these songs, then give it to us. Yeah. Right. Um, give us all the music videos. Like the last thing that they had, I think they literally had. Was it just one music video? Yeah, I think it was just one, if I remember correctly. And there should have been music videos for like Pretty Savage, because mm. that was a song that they performed a lot, but there was no MV for it. Why? I know there's money there, and right. you know the fans would go up and, and support and buy all the things. Yeah. So why? Uh, yeah, I think in 2020 it was How You Like That and and Ice Cream. That was that was it. I am. I'm super excited for this comeback. I can't wait to see the girls back together again. I've been. You know, obviously looking at their solo activities and I love seeing them thrive, you know, yeah. independently. And th- and that's why I think like it, even if they do disband mm-hmm. um, and again, no fault to the girls, I, I right, would put right. this as the, like the YG not giving them enough to do when when they obviously are all interested in doing it. Yeah. Um, they'd be fine. You know, I can see Jisoo oh, sure. pursuing more K-drama, her acting, Rosé will continue doing music, and Jenny and Lisa literally can do anything they want to do, and the fans will follow. Uh, So these girls are already superstars, but they love Blackpink, and they love the Blinks, so... I don't want them to this to be their last thing, but I'm gonna brace myself. Yeah, just just in case, yeah. just I in just, case it is. I'm just throwing it out there. It feels a little bit like they're you know they're doing one last one and then rolling on out of here. But we shall see. Yeah. We shall see. Yes. Um, okay, and let's move on to our next thing here. Disneyland. What is this all about? Okay. <laughs> 
I got an, a message uh, in the movie couple Discord under because we have a category named like a channel named theme parks and we just yes. drop any sort of theme park stuff in there because we love yeah. talking about theme parks. And uh, a friend was like, hey, just FYI, if you see any sort of like unsavory posts on the Disneyland official Instagram, just know that it was hacked. And uh, obviously nothing dies on the Internet. Nope. because it, even though it was deleted, actually, I think it was up for a little bit. It, it before no, but somebody noticed and deleted it. Yeah. Uh, because the hacker, whenever they did it, it was at that opportune time where people were probably not watching their social channels. Yeah. Because it's manned by somebody. Um, they put up, I think, at least three posts wow. with very, very racist language. Yes. Very awful. Yeah. Uh, Zach Mendoza in the chat says, "I saw the hack live. It was so bad. It's so yeah. bad. It was bad." It's real bad. Like they said some, oh, I was just like, oh, and you, and you know, when somebody puts a post like Disneyland, putting a, 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 out a post like that, you know, it was hacked, but that's just crazy to me to think that somebody got through like the Instagram. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, cause from what I'm reading about this here, I mean, the guy's supposedly a super hacker uh, and he claims to have sought revenge on Disneyland employees who supposedly mocked his quote, small penis. Um, and this is, he posted something that's, Who's the tough guy now, Jerome? Uh, he invented and uh, identified himself. Um, and these were coming up around 3.50 a.m. in the morning. So I don't know who's watching at 4 a.m. The uh, the accounts for them. So like you said, Wendy, they might have yeah. been asleep or kind of, yeah. you know, working on other things there. Didn't anticipate it. But there were, you know, three other additional posts in an Instagram story that featured racial slurs and unhinged, tan unhinged tangents. One, one of them was tangents. One of them was. Uh, calling about or talking about inventing COVID and blaming it on Wuhan that it, he's working on COVID twenty. Like, um, what the so, heck, man? Yeah, so it's pretty crazy. Unhinged. <laughs> totally to unhinged. To say the least. Um, and you should not react this way if someone makes fun of your small penis. I would recommend you not doing this because you could go to jail for this. And was it really worth it to hack a, a system like this and, and no. post this kind of nonsense? Um, so yeah, because that's 25 million followers who were seeing this stuff before Disney finally. That's came. awful. So yeah, that's that's just so. really awful. So I was I was I couldn't believe it. I was like, whoa, yeah. whoa. And this isn't okay. the first time. Back in 2019, Disney had issues with cybersecurity as well when they launched Disney Plus, and a bunch yeah. of um accounts uh were fell victim to these hackers on the streaming service. They used the uh, users' credentials and sold them on the dark web. So there's all kinds of stuff with that. So clearly Disney needs to get a little bit of a hold on their cybersecurity. Uh, I imagine they have them. more than what's available to everyday people like us. Yeah, of course you they know, have more that's like available. Definitely yes. more than just a two-step verification and a, whatever other things that's that's out there for people. Yeah. That's, that's insane. So <laughs> anyways, wanted to uh, add that to our to our yeah. run rundown because you know we 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 follow theme yeah. park stuff and speaking of which uh i'm kind of excited about this this is for another theme park okay. uh closer to la universal studios hollywood me and john's old stomping ground oh yeah i remember that place yes they are adding something new to the studio tour what and that is going to be the jupiter's claim set from jordan peele's new movie nope really yes it's okay. housed. Uh, I can't remember where it's housed, but there was another uh, outlet that claimed that it was going to be for um, Howling Horror Nights, which right. also would have made sense. Like it's, it's. I think it's a reasonable assumption. But when I saw their photo of it, which was kind of like a height, you know how you come down the trams yeah. sometimes, and you you can kind of click pictures. And I was looking at the set, and I said to Dustin, knowing how mazes and things like that were, were set up. I was like, this doesn't look like a maze that you can yeah. walk through, but it could be potentially if they, under the assumption that they were using it you know, under this article, um, that they were using it for Horror Nights, it could have been a scare zone, but it felt weirdly out of place. So now the next day, the actual um, release came out that it's a permanent addition, permanent ad addition to this uh, studio tour. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. I'm guessing they are, they're expecting this film to be huge. Otherwise, yeah. they wouldn't be adding, you know, because there's no like us house or get out sets <laughs> that's permanent. You know what I'm saying? And get out was real good. 
Wait, do they Wait. have us family that comes out and does pictures with the? That would be fun. They had a maze. Uh, okay. At 20, Halloween Horror. Yeah, right. and it was it was really well done. Okay. Like really, I think they actually did a fun thing where uh, Lupita. Yeah. Actually dressed up as like oh, her character yeah, and she yeah. like went and scared people with like That's a pair of scissors. Awesome. Yeah. That would be uh, cool. I, I think we walked through that with Josh McCuga and oh. he just had a day Lost with shit. that. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to see. <laughs> it's on it's I, I it, it exists somewhere. It's I'm one sure. of the Collider Light videos. It it exists somewhere. I would have loved to have seen uh, them walk in the park uh, taking pictures with people dressed as <sighs> The, us that been so Do you want to take a picture? <laughs> I mean, that would be so <laughs> no! <insane. laughs> But Jupiter's Scary. Claim is set in uh, Santa Clarita Valley as a family fun theme park and predicated on the whitewash history and aesthetics of the California Gold Rush, owned and operated with evangelical pride by former child star Ricky Jupe Park. I imagine that's who Stephen Ewan is playing, right? Uh huh. Jupiter's claim becomes a pivotal location as the characters seek to investigate mysterious, unexplained phenomena, leading them toward increasing danger and terrifying consequences. So, I, are you are you just driving by it, or are you going in it? That's it's, the question I have. Let me see if I can find a picture. Okay. A better a better picture of it because. Uh... There was a photo, and and when I saw it, I was like, "Oh, this is this is gonna be a yeah. scare zone because it didn't make sense." I feel like if you were here, it is. I feel like if you were um, going to like the what is it like the VIP tour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I imagine you could uh, get out and walk around, but I don't yeah. know if you're not paying. The thousands of dollars for that. Yeah. Like I don't I just send it to you via text. So I don't know if you can pull okay. it from your from your yeah, let me Mac. see here. Uh it's an it's kind okay. of a, a, a better shot of like what that looks like further away. Gotcha. Actually, here's a better photo. Let me, let me see if I can bring instead. that up. Let me send you a better one. Okay. Uh can um, I do it? I'm getting some people again. I don't know. We're getting a comment. R.I.P. Tony Sirico. MK, are you sure? What? That's. Are you sure? I don't see Hello? anything here. I don't see anything. Oh, wait. No, John. Oh, I, no. Hartley. Don't even. Polly Walnuts? No. No. Oh. Oh. But I don't see anybody with a verified account. Saying that, oh, well, there's one person here, but I don't see a variety. Oh, here we go. Indie Wire. Michael Imperioli has revealed that the Sopranos co star Tony Sirico has <gasps> at the age of 79. God damn it. We found a groove as Christopher and Paul. Where are you finding that? Oh. Twitter. Yeah. Oh, damn it. I, does it feel like we've, we've lost a lot of people in the last yeah. couple of days? We lost a bunch of character actors over the last three days. I don't know if people yeah. picked it up, but there were a bunch of character actors. Yeah, I've been Moon following Festival. it. Yeah. Oh, no. Damn it. I loved Paulie Walnuts, man. That was I loved Paulie Walnuts. Oh, dude, what heartbreaking news. That's awful. Wow. Yep. Jesus. That's a shame. Damn shame. Because we just lost James Khan yesterday. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. Oh, it's a shame. Damn shame. Yeah, Leota, James Khan, and Polly Walnuts, all within a month or so. Jesus. Yeah, all within. If you, it feels like literally in the same week. I know it's not, but. Dude. <sighs> Thanks for bringing everybody down, MK Songbird. <laughs> you fucking cooler, man. Jesus. Oh, That's boy. Heartbreaking. That is heartbreaking, man. I love Oh, it. boy. Jesus. Yeah, man. you're such a big fan. Yeah, I love The Sopranos. The Sopranos. I've read, I've read so many things about The Sopranos. So many things. So to... Here and they just I just reread. Oh no, they just did earlier this year on the Ringer a breakdown of that episode mm -hmm. where they're chasing that uh, assassin through the woods in the snow. Him and uh, him and Christopher. 
Mm. Uh, and so they did a oral history of it. So they interviewed all the actors. Um, you know, they took some some uh, old interviews with James Gandolfini because, of course, he's no longer with us. And and Steve Buscemi directed the episode. So they had Buscemi talk about his process and direct. So that was a great to have Tony Sirico be involved in that as well. So, yeah. damn it. Damn it. Wow. Damn wow. it. Respect your mother. Respect your mother. Anyway, ah, oh, it's such a shame. Oh, oh my does God. it say was he just? No, he wasn't sick, right? What it was? No, it doesn't like say. It wasn't how or... any sort of illnesses. Yeah, no, it doesn't say. But just um, not yet. I'm sure that will come out. Yeah, it'll it'll come. I mean, this isn't even. Yeah, it hasn't even a hundred percent. A few minutes hit. old. Yeah. 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 So a shame, a shame. Um, yeah, 79 years old could just be old age. Uh, it could be a heart attack, could be any number of things. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Polly Walnuts, the best. No one wow. kicked your ass like Polly Walnuts did. Um, so yeah, there's already a post by Imperiolio in there talking about how much he's heartbroken. And uh, Robert Sirico, which is his, his brother. Um, so, oh no, sorry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there it is. Um, there's already a mass of a Christian burial is going to be celebrated by his, uh, by the brother, by his brother, father, Robert Sirico Wednesday morning at 10 30. So they're already setting up funeral stuff. Jesus. Oh, clearly they had put all this in motion. Um, yeah. Before. So this may have happened. Like they're just waiting for the yeah. family to process it and the family for it to be okay to, yeah, to announce release it, the yeah. news. Yeah. Uh, memorial How sad. donations may be made in his honor to Wounded Warriors, St. Jude's Hospital, and the Action Institute. So if anybody listening or, or watching right now wants to do that, you can do that in honor of his name. So Pine Barrens. Yeah, that was the episode of Pine Barrens. Mm-hmm. Oh, Wendy. So sad. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, so sad. let's move on. So sad. Yeah, let's wrap let's, things up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's let's uh, and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about what what you are watching right now. Anything? Any any new stuff you're getting into? Well, just finished the end. boys, uh, okay. which was great. The finale last night was fantastic. Um, I'm watching the old man. We're heading into the fifth episode. We're gonna watch it tonight. Uh, my girlfriend is all into the RuPaul, the most recent season. She's oh yes, the season of RuPaul. They're at Comic Con, are they not? Yeah, they're. I think they're going to be at Comic Con. Yeah. And uh, Breeders uh, wraps up its third season next week, so I've been watching that as well. Um, and we just watched the Big Con on Apple TV. If you guys like documentaries mm. about people who somehow found a way to escape the government for a long time, and and just kind of crazy stories. The Big Con is one you should definitely watch. It's like four parts, an hour each, um, mm-hmm. and it's on Apple TV. So uh, I definitely, definitely recommend that one. What about you, Wendy? What are you watching? No, uh, it's K drama all day, every day over here, where I should <laughs> be watching other shows, but the K dramas half my attention. I started this new one. It's not yeah. new, but it's new to me. Hotel Del Luna, yeah. and it's essentially about the. It's a hotel for ghosts. Uh, and oh, the owner nice. of it is cursed to kind of run the hotel. Uh, yeah. And it, it's and it's more than that. It's, you know, and she's you don't know why exactly she's cursed, but she's got this. Yeah. She's very bitter with, uh, you know, having to run this hotel. Yeah. So she kind of hides all of her pain and sorrow in her lavish lifestyle. <laughs> and uh, she's like thousands of years. She's been cursed to do this. Yeah. So you see her in different eras and um, she's trying to acquire a new human manager for the hotel. And I'm on episode three. She's found the person. Uh, so, yeah, that is oh, wow. that is what I'm watching, along with uh, I saw Love and Thunder twice. Yes, me too. Yes. What I'll did you it. think of it? Well, OK, let's do the review now. Then. Let's okay, do it. Yes. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, uh, real quick, non-spoiler. Yes. Uh, I enjoyed the hell out of it. I enjoyed it even more a second time around. Now, does that mean there are there aren't issues with it? No, I think there are a couple of issues. I think I wanted some more Jane. Yeah. I wanted some more Gore, the God Butcher. Yes. Uh, but other than that, I had no complaints about the movie. I loved the humor for the most part. This is the Thor that works, and this is the Thor that people like. So this is the Thor that you're getting. And Taika Waititi coming back to do. Uh, his version of this was his version of Thor turned up to 11. I feel like Marvel was <laughs> like, just hit these two points and then do whatever the hell you want. And Tiger was like, really? Okay. And did his thing. Cause there's a lot of really funny 
out there uh, uh, humor that I yeah. thoroughly enjoyed. And I loved Russell Crowe and his cameo. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed it as well. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, I loved this version of Jane Foster. Yes. Uh, this was the Jane Foster I, I wish we saw in all the other. And, yeah. I, and, and I don't mean her as the mighty Thor. Right. I mean, just like this Jane, like they actually gave her more to do. Yeah. More and life. I don't mean just, yeah, more life, you know, and it's not just when she's holding the hammer, you know, as the mighty Thor, which she did a fantastic job. Like she looks good yeah, yeah she does. um fantastic. yeah i would have liked a little bit more uh time with with jane a little bit more with gore and i think most of my criticism is really for the third act yeah uh, yeah yeah i had i had some i have some and that's spoiler territory if i get too much into yeah, yeah. it so uh exactly. i'll just i'll just say the i i get i think i understand where they're they're going with it but i don't really uh, it didn't really pay off for me Okay. Like I wasn't emotionally invested in the choices that they made to get fair, there. Fair. Uh, but had we spent more time with Gore, I think yeah. we would have gotten there. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah, that's, sure. that's that. yeah. The, the goats. The I love the goats. Yeah. The goats. Oh, my God. Oh, the my goats. God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I thought for sure that they were going to make a Taylor Swift joke, but maybe they cut <laughs> it out. Because remember, there was that whole thing with that song of Taylor Swift. Yeah. And, we were in trouble, and yeah. they put it to goats because the goats scream all through the movie. It's the and, best thing, guys. Oh God! I mean, the, I went. I took Lindley to see it, the first screening, and she knew as soon as the goats appeared. She looked at me. She goes, "Oh no!" And I'm, like, <laughs> I'm already lost. Like I'm already losing it right now. She knows stupid <laughs> shit like that makes me laugh. For Twenty <laughs> minutes, man. Uh, there's one. The, I'm not going to ruin any scenes, but there's one scene where they hit something, and you just hear them scream in the distance. Yep. And I lost. <laughs> my shit for like 10 minutes i just thinking crazy. about it now it makes me laugh it's yeah. so funny just that because <laughs> we as the audience weren't expecting it either uh, yeah and yeah. it just kind of like dead stops yes and, <laughs> and you're just like <laughs> and, and, it, and it really is <laughs> it pauses for a second and then you hear that scream and you're just like oh and and it's a domino effect yeah. reaction where things like oh. that happens and the scream yeah. happens and then Nothing oh. happens to the audience, and then everybody just busts up laughing. Oh, dude, God, I mean, it's great. I kind of want those goats as a thing I can press every once in a while. <laughs> just <laughs> make that a sound alert. Oh, make that's that a, a sound great alert. idea. Ambulance soul, you still in here? Help, oh, help Roka God. set that up. Please, I got to get that sound in here. Oh, my <laughs> God. That is so great. I got to add it to my way. thing here. Best right. way to utilize a goat scream. Oh, my God. So now funny. you've given me an idea. I'm gonna work on that this weekend. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Overall, yes, good stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And what else comes out this weekend? Well, what do you? Got? Uh, is there anything else coming out this weekend? Um, uh, I think is the Gray Man happening? No, the, not yet. No, Blackbird oh, okay. comes out on Apple TV, but I don't. Ooh, that I want to see. I yeah, missed the too. premiere. I couldn't I go. See. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. the Gray Man's next week. Yeah, Gray Man's next week. Elvis is still out. Um, and oh, oh, we forgot to talk about this for K-pop Corner. Go Zach ahead. Mendoza just said it. Uh, Stray Kids concert this weekend. Wow, where are you going? Uh, yeah, I have tickets. Wow. But okay, we were supposed to talk about this in K-pop, uh, and I totally go forgot. Ahead. So last thing I'm, we talked about. Let's go. I'm legit worried that I'm not going to get to go because three of the members tested positive for COVID on That's the right. second. That's right. So I am super nervous. I was talking to my K-pop bestie Warren about this, and he's like. Yeah. So is this still happening? I'm like, I don't know, man. I got the tickets. I have the light stick. I have the tickets. I have the outfit. He's flying down tomorrow. Wow. He's flying in. Would they do a concert without? No. No. Okay. I don't want to see it. My, one of my biases. My, he's sick. It's Felix. <laughs> he's the one of the, it's like, my shirt literally says Felix's deep voice. Why am I going to wear that to a concert if Felix isn't going to be there? <laughs> Not that he would see it in a million years, but can they sing over Zoom? No, it's not the same thing. Oh gosh! So <laughs> the court, I think our CDC rule is that that you yeah. count from the first day you have symptoms, right? And you count five days for the quarantine. Okay. So they tested positive on the second, okay. but they probably had symptoms by at, as early as the first. Wow! Wow! And and so far, I've heard no other news. I am refreshing their Twitter. Okay. And the Live Nation K-pop Twitter, yeah, like every half hour just to see. Okay. So just I don't see. know. Uh, I know that they postponed the 
show in Atlanta and they mm-hmm. postponed the show this past Wednesday that was supposed to be at Fort Worth. Jeez. And they postponed those. So I feel terrible for the stays that had tickets and they were made travel arrangements to go. Um, so I don't know. Like I'm lucky that I live in LA. So it's not like I'm traveling or booking hotel, but I know people do yeah. travel. Yeah, of course. So I'm worried because I'm going. I have tickets. I want updates. I want to know what happens. I'll text you. On IG. I want to follow you on IG. Oh, yeah. Text me too as well, please. I want yeah. To yeah. Um, well, Theral underscore unfiction sent us two street, uh, two uh, um, uh, bits here. 26 Thank bits you. each. The mm. first one is, I'm waiting for Nope on July 22nd. The hype for this movie is real. Yeah. Agreed. Um, my screening is on the 19th. So that's that's uh, the way it is down here. I don't know if they've already shown it in L.A. or not, but in San Diego, the screening is on the 19th. So it's that it's very close to the release. Mm. And, and then he said um, the other uh, cheer he sent, 28 uh, cheer said, no goats were harmed in the making of this film <laughs> in the credits of Thor. Yeah, that's funny. very funny. Yes, absolutely. So they've got to release them, right? They've got to release. I want to squeeze one with the goat sound. <laughs> <laughs> right here, one each on each side. It would just be perfect. I um, want, yeah. If they make it, I'm buying it. But you have to buy. You obviously have to buy both. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you gotta buy both. You can't you gotta get both without the other. For God's sake. Yeah. Oh, make them Funkos. For God's sake. <laughs> they probably are. They're gonna be like Comic Con <laughs> exclusives. I'm sure of it. Buy an Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, all right. Well, let's get on out of here. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate it madly. As Wendy has said over and over again, if you're watching right now and you haven't subscribed to the Outlaw Nation Twitch channel, please feel free to do so down there. And if you're watching later on YouTube, please feel free to go to Twitch and subscribe uh, to my Outlaw Nation uh, Twitch uh, channel here. We appreciate it. And Wendy's channel. So, Wendy, another fun show. Wendy, yes. tell them where they can find you everything you got going on. You can find me everywhere at just my name, Wendy Lee Zaney. Unless you're trying to find me on TikTok, then it's just Wendy Zaney. Uh, you can find me on YouTube under the movie couple. And uh, I have a podcast with yeah. my K-pop bestie now it's okay. called K-pop bestie. We just talk about K-pop and K-drama with Warren from Cosmic Wonder. Um, we're only two episodes in, but if you search on YouTube or on uh, Spotify or Apple podcast, K-pop bestie, you will find those two episodes there. There you go. All right. Yeah. And uh, pray for me that I get to go see Stray Kids. Yes, everyone. Say a prayer for her to make sure yes. she can go. I'm going to knock on wood for you. Yes. Um, as for you, you can follow me at The Roca Says on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I will be doing more TikTok stuff. I promise. I swear. So come and follow me there. I see other people doing just the bare minimum, and they're getting a bunch of followers. So I got to do something here. Uh, and also follow me, uh, as I said, uh, The Outlaw Nation on Twitch, if you're watching later on YouTube. And if you're uh, watching now, Go to my YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed, youtube.com slash John Roca says. And my podcast, The Top Ten, The Cinephiles, and The Geek Buddies, all out there for you to enjoy. The brand new episode of The Geek Buddies is already up for you all to listen to or watch. Uh, and don't forget, tomorrow, live at 9 a.m., Strong Style, our pro wrestling show, we're going to be talking all about the Vince McMahon shit that broke today, where Ooh. he paid off apparently four other women uh, up to $12 million total uh and to hide the affairs as well so there's a lot to explore there for sure so yeah, yeah so we shall see for sure but yeah uh all right well y'all take care of yourselves be well uh and we'll talk to you next week with another stick around for the raid week. oh yeah uh, what am i doing uh, do i stay on i think amblin's got you okay amblin what am i doing amblin tell me what to do here when you do the raids she always messes with me with the raid. she doesn't tell me she's doing it and then she just does it so <laughs> Do I end the broadcast or not end the broadcast? What do I do? Do you have like a starting soon screen that you can hit on uh, and throw up? Mm, that I don't know. I don't know how to do all that. On StreamYard? <laughs> oh, on StreamYard? I don't know. You're good. End it now. It's fine. Great. Oh, Thank okay. You. All right. We're out of here. <laughs> Please take care of yourselves, y'all. Take Bye. Be well. Bye. Uh, there it is. Bye.